ladies and gentlemen, please welcome French broadcaster and journalist, Christine Kelly. Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour. C'est un plaisir pour moi de vous accueillir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to uh, welcome you here on the fifth uh, GS here in Marrakech. I will be here with you for this first day. I am a journalist. I am a member of the uh, High Council of the uh, Audiovisual. I am the youngest one, but I started the foundation in France, the first foundation that is helps women and I encourage them to invest themselves in their work and to create their own businesses uh, to start this day. I am delighted to welcome Mrs. Uh, His Majesty's advisor, Mrs. Zulikha Nasri, that I would like to welcome to the panel. In the name of Allah, the merciful, prayers on Muhammad, seal of the prophets, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ministers, and I guess some of you are here, excellencies, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, allow me, first of all, to bid a warm welcome to all people here, especially representatives of uh, countries who have uh, taken trouble to come here and enrich our GS, which uh, is hosted here in Morocco, Marrakesh. This edition is under the uh, high patrons of His Majesty Mohammed VI, and which is organized in the context of the strategic dialogue between Morocco and the United States, between His Majesty the King and President Obama. I am delighted to find myself amongst yourselves here on this day, which celebrates feminine entrepreneurship worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond celebrating this, it's a commitment that this initiative should all the shared by the international community. By way of instance, the commitment explains the political will of states to create the favorable condition for the larger promotion of feminine entrepreneurship. Undoubtedly, these conditions are based primarily in the women's status in societies. Morocco, for a few decades now, has started a progressive approach which allowed women to evolve and little by little integrate different sectors of the public life, socio, cultural, economic, and political life. following the uh, efforts uh, undertaken in the past and for an outreach democracy and participation to meet the legitimate uh, needs of uh, Moroccan people. His Majesty Mohammed VI has put women's promotion since he took the brain of Morocco in a strategy to endow it with a status that preserves and asserts women's identity and ensures her equality with men in society. How could we hope to prosper if women who represent half of the population see their rights 
denied, subject to violence and marginalization, regardless of what the law and what religion bestows upon them. This is a state a quote from His Majesty's speech 15 years ago, more precisely, August 20th, 1989, which announced and launched the big royal project to the advantage of Moroccan women and which was expressed in a persuasive way in 2003 of the enactment of the new family code as a historical moment or historic moment in view of its provisions. And today, women is regarded as a woman in society, master of her destiny, of her rights, as family leader, head, sharing with her husband as a wife and her rights as a mother. Other advances have been witnessed also in the social, economic, and political spheres, and the supreme input of the law, of the first law, namely the Constitution, which was adopted in 2011, and which affirms the equality between men and women in their rights and civic liberties, political, economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. The Constitution affirms also the participation of women in all instances and bodies created to protect citizens' rights, men and women. I'm going to stop here to, because we cannot help not that all provisions, the Constitution in Morocco uses words that are for men and women. This vocabulary is not good wishes, but it asserts the will, firm will, to ensure equality between men and women. In addition, various structures and many tools have been established to ensure parity between men and women. The Constitution has created, to quote just a few, the authority for parity and to fight every form of discrimination that women may subject to. Women has also put at the core of uh, the National Initiative for Human Development Initiative uh, launched by His Majesty back in 2007 as a global vision, innovative vision for the underserved population or in precarious situations. This uh, initiative comes into different programs, is meant to fight poverty and improve the conditions of uh, the target population by developing income-generating activities. Women have played a central role in the development of these programs. They have shown their know-how and thus thousands of women have materialized their entrepreneurship spirit and created micro businesses and cooperatives that are su supported by the National Institute of Human Development, either by the finance and the funding of NDH or microcredit. This uh, gives us an idea about the women, idea about women's uh, entrepreneurship that have always existed in the urban and the rural areas and in women's households. Women, in addition to these uh, heavy burden, heavy chores, even if it was not feasible, was uh, selling, buying, produced handicraft products. So it's not a surprise that the, the uh, marketing of uh, local made products and their success in sales between Moroccans and Tunisia is the result of women's ingenuity. This dynamism characterizes Moroccan women who, once she benefits of uh, favorable condition, can integrate herself successfully in the modern structure by developing their own businesses in every sector, including that those that need high technology. The political will of uh, Morocco and the awareness of Moroccan society have shown that 
women needed only this opportunity to express themselves. And at this level, I would like to underline the role of women's associations who have supported this development. Of course, now we have the milestones. The conditions are more and more favorable. Still, this doesn't mean that we have reached our objective because we have a long way to go. And the efforts in as far as education and training, more particularly, are still to be strengthened. This if it means anything. It means that we need to exchange experiences in all the countries present in this forum and learn from each other and look at the best practices, best practices that have helped promote women elsewhere. And I believe that this is the purpose of your meeting. Thank you very much, and thank you. Merci beaucoup pour thank you very much for this introduction, ma'am. I invite you now to, as you may know, this summit is organized both by Morocco and the United States. I would like you to welcome Mrs. Benny Prisker, State Secretary in Trade. Good morning and welcome everyone. I want to thank King Mohammed and the government of Morocco for hosting this year's Global Entrepreneurship Summit. I'm delighted to join you today to celebrate entrepreneurship and to highlight the economic and social benefits that innovation brings to all of our countries. But before I begin, I must say that I am so inspired by the women at this summit. All of you, your dynamism, your fearlessness, your courage to not only enter the workforce, but to start a business, it is so inspiring to me. Your appetite for risk, your vision for your companies, and indeed your vision for your societies comprise the very definition of the entrepreneurial spirit. In the United States, we do not just respect and admire our entrepreneurs, we celebrate them. From Benjamin Franklin to Steve Jobs, from Elizabeth Arden to Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos, who started her blood testing company at age 19. From Bill Gates to Alexa Von Tobel, who founded LearnVest and will join us th at this year's Global Entrepreneurship Summit. The story of America has been shaped and driven by people like those I just mentioned, risk takers, inventors, pioneers in business and technology. Entrepreneurship is one of America's greatest assets and exports. And President Obama has been promoting global innovation since his famous speech in Cairo in 2009. The President knows that opportunity for business creators to thrive is the foundation for a rising middle class, for security and stability, and for broad-based prosperity. So I am proud to lead the U.S. efforts to support and empower aspiring innovators, both at home and around the world. Now, some countries still restrict access to opportunity by exerting social pressure, by limiting educational opportunities, by making it difficult to raise capital. But no nation can grow and thrive over the long term when huge swaths of it po its population are denied a chance to chase their dreams and to succeed. Societies can only reach their full economic potential if they tap into 100 percent 
of their talent pool. That means embracing the ideas and aspirations of our youth. That means enabling women to get a good education and secure the capital needed to start their own companies. That means allowing women to dictate their own futures. That means empowering you and all women entrepreneurs. This is not an abstract topic for me. This is personal. I spent 27 years in the private sector, and I've started five companies. I understand how it feels when most of your colleagues and your competitors are men. I understand what it's like to have an idea, but not know how to take it from a concept to a business plan to an entity that can actually get funded. I understand the uncertainty associated with needing to hire people with expertise that you don't possess. I understand what it's like to stumble, to get back up, and to try again. I also know the exhilaration of bringing in that first $100 of revenue to your new business. I was fortunate to have the guidance, direction, capital, and the fortitude I needed to succeed. And I want all entrepreneurs, especially women like you, to have the same support structure. Because the fact is, when women entrepreneurs take risks and succeed, societies change for the better. Expectations change, not only for other women, but for men and children too. It becomes easier to accept the idea of a woman as the family's breadwinner, the head of a household, a community leader, or a head of state. Because when women entrepreneurs thrive, economies grow. In the United States, women-owned firms generate more than $1.3 trillion in revenues every year and employ over 8 million people. In developing nations, there are as many as 10 million small and medium-sized enterprises owned by women, all of them creating jobs, driving consumer spending, and injecting growth into their communities. Because when women entrepreneurs flourish, families benefit. Women tend to spend more of their money on their children's health and education, which leads to a healthier, more skilled, more productive generation of citizens. In the United States, we know the power of women entrepreneurs as leaders and trailblazers in our communities. In the Obama administration, we are leveraging this power through a brand new public-private partnership called the President's Ambassadors for Global Entrepreneurship, or PAGE which I am honored to chair. This initiative brings together 11 of America's top entrepreneurs who use their stories and their expertise to mentor and inspire people who want to do startups, who want to create new businesses. Across our country, they help us, but they also come all over the world. Among our PAGE ambassadors are a number of extraordinary women who have changed our country and the world for better. Women like Nina Vaca, the daughter of immigrants who founded the IT services firm Pinnacle in her living room with just $300. She has turned it into a global brand. Women like Alexa Von Tobel, who started LearnVest to make personal investing more manageable, and whose company now makes financial planning easier for thousands and thousands of Americans. Women like Daphne Kohler, who co-founded Coursera to bring high-quality education from the, the America's top universities to people around the world at a low cost. I am proud that Alexa and Daphne will join us this week to participate at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. 
Yet, even with American support of entrepreneurs worldwide, we know that our efforts can only go so far when women lack access to the basic ingredients needed to start a business. Too often, women lack access to capital. Too often, women lack access to training in vocational and technical skills. Too often, women lack access to information and communications technology, the computers and the mobile devices needed to grow a business in the 21st century. Female entrepreneurs all over the world also need a change in culture. Where it's acceptable to fail in one business and then try again with another. Where women are encouraged to break free from their traditional roles. Where affordable childcare equips mothers with the freedom to strike out on their own. Where anyone, male or female, is empowered to start and run their own business. On top of these challenges, in many communities, structural obstacles still create enormous difficulties for men and women who want to launch and grow a new business. I have traveled all over the world since I became secretary, and I have met with countless ministers and heads of states. They always ask me, how do you encourage and support entrepreneurship like you do in the United States? The conversation usually begins with how to build an infrastructure of opportunity. Countries need a strong educational system that produces students who are able to think broadly and creatively, and that produces students that are able to ex accept and take risks, even if it could mean failure. Entrepreneurs thrive when their country's private sector and universities have close relationships so that ideas can easily become commercialized and tested in the market. Countries also need laws that make it easier for innovators to both start a company and to wind one down, and laws that protect intellectual property. Also, entrepreneurs need strong rule of law, a level playing field, and the ability to access financing throughout the stages of a business's life cycle. Even without all the elements in place, entrepreneurs around the world continue to defy the odds, take risks, and inspire us with their perseverance. There are entrepreneurs like Ethel Coffey, who is here today. I met Ethel this past May at the Meltwater fin Entrepreneurial School of Technology, a dynamic incubator in Accra, Ghana. Ethel runs a successful technology consulting firm that specializes in many fields, including mobile app and software development. But her success did not come easily. Ethel grew up in Accra. She was one of only four women in a class of 150 to graduate from Ghana's Valley View University, earning a degree in computer science. She won a scholarship to attend graduate school in London, then returned home to Ghana to pursue her dream and start her business. However, Ethel could not find enough clients for her consulting firm. She could not secure enough business or support. She ran into too many obstacles, and she had to close down her operations. Ethel's original company failed, but all was not lost. In the following years, she worked for the Gates Foundation on a project to expand mobile technology in Ghana. She served as a technical consultant to the Afford Foundation initiative on election monitoring in Nigeria. She managed a team of technical and business analysts for Vodafone. Through these experiences, Ethel learned and decided to try again, this time with mentorship from her father, her former boss at Vodafone, 
and one of the leading digital media entrepreneurs in Ghana. Ethel succeeded, and today her business is thriving. Now she wants other women, especially in the tech sector, to follow her lead. In fact, this summer, Ethel organized an online Pan-African meetup to exchange best practices and encourage fellow women tech entrepreneurs across the continent. President Obama and I know that few, if any, entrepreneurs succeed on their own. The United States is committed to serving as your partner, and we are acting to expand our role as the global leader in entrepreneurship. In the coming weeks, we will announce the expansion of the President's Ambassadors for Global Entrepreneurship, adding new voices to our efforts to inspire innovators in America and beyond our borders. In addition, we are supporting a new entrepreneurship curriculum developed by Daphne Kohler at Coursera to teach aspiring entrepreneurs around the world the basics of starting a business. So let me close by saying all of you embody the statement made famous by Bobby Kennedy a half century ago, that some see things the way they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. Everyone in this room has dreams and is working to realize them. Every one of you has challenged convention. Everyone here has the capacity to not just start a business, but to bring prosperity to your family and your communities. Throughout this summit, I urge you to share that spirit because you are the agents of change for the 21st century. Thank you for being here. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary of uh, Commerce. And now let us uh, continue the introductory presentations with uh, Miriam Mensaya Chacron. She is the president of the General Confederation of Companies in Morocco. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah the Pitiful. Madame Zona Hasri, um, Secretary of Commerce Pritzker, Ministers Bahaida, Mrs. Bahawaidi, uh, dear. Um, November 19, a day that launched a movement where the world unites in support of women entrepreneurs. And I would like you to give a huge and big applause for this day. I'm very excited that so many impactful and motivated women are gathered to this day here in Marrakesh and around the world. Marrakesh known as a crossroad for cultural and civilizations, and for the first time is led by a woman, Mayor Fatem Zahra Al-Mansouri, who deserves our recognition today for hosting this important event. Our goal today is to engage women and men globally to pledge their support to women entrepreneurs or cause to support their community with talent, time, or treasure. The total number of women on the planet is around 
3.6 billion, and yet the World Economic Forum reports that no nation has yet achieved gender equality. Although the share of women entrepreneurs is still below our inspiration all over the world, as it is the case in Morocco. Here is no doubt, there is no doubt that the trends of the latest decade show a paradigm shift in terms of women's participation. In Morocco, this favorable standing is, for had, is, is fostered by key reforms fully supported by His Majesty King Mohammed VI, among various initiatives, to name just a few, as Mrs. Councillor just talked about, the reform of the Wumudawana, the personal status code known as family code in Moroccan law, and the ENDH, National Initiative for Women Development, that is headed by a woman that is with us today, is support, uh, that supported access to vulnerable groups and their majority women to social and economic services. This effort contributed tremendously to including a major change in the mindset of Moroccans. In a region where two-thirds of the population is under the age of 30, youth are definitely our major assets and undoubtedly our main challenge. The job market, as it stays today, will not be able to absorb such a large number of job seekers. There is now a great emphasis on promoting entrepreneurship to stimulate job and value creation. Luckily, the young generation, or the Y Gen, is by essence disruptive and aspires to be more engaging in innovative approaches to entrepreneurship. It goes without saying that this new bread of entrepreneurs requires a set of measures and policies that will spur entrepreneurship, and it starts with education and a favorable ecosystem. As demonstrated by numerous studies, the key to future for, our, for, for each country and each institution lies in its ability to attract talents. Today, talent is most important than capital or any other resource. Develop a gender approach in this area is not just a matter of equality. It is a getaway to success and prosperity in an increasingly competitive world. Thanks to entrepreneurship, many Moroccan women and other women around the world are self-employed and employ other women. As much as self-employment, it is a way to higher income, and it is also, and most importantly, a gain of self-esteem and dignity. We at CGM, General Confederation of Enterprises of Morocco, walked the talk and made sure that women entrepreneurs are duly represented within the organization. In the executive body of our confederation, 22 commissions are headed by women and the other half by men. And two, uh, and two uh, NGOs also are sitting on the board. One is representing women entrepreneurs and the other one, women in governance body. Our effort to go to supporting women entrepreneurs in their effort to scale up their ventures by helping them access the, the three M's, which are money, market, and mentorship. Hence, as a true believers that investing in gender equality and empowerment of women is smart economies, we advocate that governments and societies in the 144 countries that celebrate this day to support girls' education with a focus on science, engineering, 
research, and technology. My pitch for today is to invite each and every one of you to take full advantage of our presence here to share and, cere and celebrate the women who are pioneers and role models in the region and all over the world so that other women get inspiration, strength, and know how to start their own venture as well. Let us create a Google spreadsheet where people can nominate their best local and national stories. We could also benefit from regional and national networks for collaboration and support for women in Morocco, MENA, and Africa. And this, is, this will facilita facilitate the exchange of knowledge, learning, and economic opportunities. And my message to young girls is summarized by a quote, in a quote by Johann Wolfgang Gott that says, whatever you can do or dream, you can begin it. Boldness has genius and power and magic in it, end of quote. So dream lucidly, hope constantly, dare with passion, take risk with courage, and engage with tenacity. Entrepreneurship is all of that at once. And thank you.